Right, power electronics. This is a course that a lot of people fail. During my time, half the class failed it. And yeah, it's uh, not an easy subject for a couple of reasons. But here I am, because a lot of people fail it. That's why I'm doing a video about it. Okay, power electronics. You must first understand why is it important? What actually is going on? Then you're able to get a good understanding, good grasp, and then you're able to possibly not fail. Yeah. Okay, power, it comes from the word power and electronics, meaning that you are converting, converting forms of power using electronics. Using, as you know, energy cannot be, com cannot be created or destroyed because and power is just another subset of energy. So you're just converting one form to another form. That's power electronics. You use power electronics to convert a power from an original form from A to B, different kind of form. So that is a very, very basic of it. Just hold on to that for now. So we look at some applications of it. What are the applications of power electronics actually? Um, you look at Google or whatever, you're all solid state technology, all this kind of that, all the kind of fancy terms and yeah, nobody's gonna understand any shit, okay? You're all students, you're not gonna do that. So one thing I'm gonna give it to you is that, let's say phone charger. Okay, that's one. Because why, how is it? Because power electronics convert from AC power to DC. AC is one form of power, one form, and this is another form of power. So phone or any battery, any battery takes in only DC. No battery takes in AC yet, okay? No, none of that happens, at least not yet, at least not at this time. So everything relies on DC. In your home, the wall socket, the plug, it comes in as AC power because that's what is supplied to you. Maybe 240, maybe 120, whatever, something like that. And it's all AC power, so you have to rectify it. To become a DC so you can charge your battery of your phone you can charge a battery or something else yeah that's one major application of it that you can see around um, in places number two is that uh, let's say solar I want to stick with something that is more mainstream solar it produces DC power so to integrate to the grid which is running on AC power you need to use some interface some sort of interface in the middle the bridge to convert from DC into AC power. That is another application of it that power electronics comes into where you're converting a form of DC power to another form into AC power. So I'll stick with these two for now first. Moving on. Okay, the importance of power electronics. As we know, solar is getting real, getting big. That's one thing. Uh, we, need to com we need to feed it in and integrate it integration of solar integration okay next i want to talk about as well a frequency manipulation manipulation okay ac means alternating current it runs and it's function on a frequency how fast or how slow is the frequency how much hertz and frequency is the thing that controls the speed of motor of AC motor whether it could be synchronous motor or induction motor so this frequency component is the one that controls the speed so we've introduced a speed control into this all into a lot of these things now and before this like you know like a water pump or whatever pump that runs on a motor psh, psh, what happens is that you just run the motor at full speed and then apply brakes onto it and apply brakes onto it to control the frequency yeah, to control the speed of the motor and then that's like very inefficient because it's just, it's just like you know peeling back all the energy that you've used so this is actually what Tesla is doing for them that's how they control the speed on an electric car using frequency moving on Types of power electronics. Okay, this is where it goes to a bit of the syllabus. Before this, I'm just giving you the gist of everything that you're gonna see. Now you're gonna see the types of power electronics gonna be used and what you basically is gonna learn. 
There are basically four types. A rectifier. A rectifier goes from DC. Uh, no, 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 Goes um changes from AC to DC. So rectifier is something like AC wave is something like this, and it changes into DC, which is a pure rectifier. So everything's on the positive side. There's nothing here. Let me use another color. There's nothing here. Everything is just positive now. In a sense, it is all direct current because everything's above zero and you can just average it out using capacitor inductance or whatever. So that's rectifier, AC to DC. And next you have inverter, which is DC to AC. So from a DC, let me use another color. That is your VDC. It goes into an AC mode. Where it goes. So we're integrating anything like solar or any battery charging. You want to charge something into AC, like you know, high power batteries to make up for everything. You turn this DC into a sinusoidal AC wave. That's inverter. So we've covered AC to DC, DC, DC to AC. Next, you have some more things that probably you're not going to learn too much in this course, which is a DC DC. So in DC DC, like oh, it's the same form of power. What do I do? You manipulate the voltage. The voltage may go up and the voltage may go down. That's one thing. That's why I call a buck or boost, buck converter or boost converter. That's DC to DC. And finally, AC to AC, which you're not going to learn too much. Um, basically, it manipulates frequency. They're both in AC form. It manipulates frequency. And also, if you want to, it manip manipulates voltage. This is the basic of a solid state transformer. Yeah. So there we go. This is the basic and introduction of Powertronics. Stay tuned for more videos and have a nice day.